Welcome back to The Watch List. I'm Nicole Petalides, live at the New York Stock Exchange. NVIDIA's blockbuster earnings are intensifying the already bright spotlight that we've seen for growth for AI. Joining me right now with some details and things to watch, Hatem Diab is with us, managing partner at Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management. I'm glad you're with us. You talk about generative AI and the, this revolution that's happening. I mean, it's for real. Even Jamin Dimon, who didn't love Bitcoin, for example, he thinks AI is for real. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's good to be on the, on, on the, on the floor here. It's really fantastic what's going on. I think uh, what happened with generative AI is really going to change the way that we interact with technology and computers in general. You know, the way we work, the way we talk to each other, the way really we, we do anything is going to be transformed in a way that we haven't seen since the dawn of the internet. And that's really where the NVIDIA story comes in. Yeah, I mean, people are naming their kids Jensen. And I was actually showing, you know, that we had the weekly, you know, the New York Post on yeah. Sundays does the weekly winners and losers yeah. in business. Yeah. And uh, Jensen Wong, his picture was right there at the top of the winners. Yeah. And, um, you know, Google's um, Gemini and the AI Miss yeah. <clears throat> was in the losers. But um, your thoughts on how NVIDIA is really leading this revolution? You know, we were involved with NVIDIA since 2016, and back then it was simply a story about gaming and GPUs and so forth. And, and the way that transformed is that these GPUs are really the best, the best thing for all these very massive computational needs that NVIDIA really has mastered over the last 20 years or so. Uh, so I think what's, what's going on is we're seeing all the, now that Gen AI is out of the box basically, we're seeing a lot of these big name companies, big consumer pro uh, companies like Facebook or Meta or Google investing tremendous, tremendous amount of money into these uh, computer clusters to have these, these capabilities and NVIDIA is, is really benefiting tremendously from that. And so also about how AI is moving to mobile, people were talking about Qualcomm, for example, and just how it's evolving, yeah. right? And um, I guess everything we're doing will have some sort of AI yeah. that will be gathering our information and I guess will be helping us as well. Yeah, I think it's going to be pervasive and that's really why the NVIDIA stock has, has almost doubled over the last three months is because people are seeing how pervasive these tools are going to be and really any vert vertical of the economy so from mobile to software to healthcare to really anything that we do we would we you're going to have to have some kind of ai component and who's going to provide that to you basically mm -hmm. so in the meantime nvidia which is at 795 today i mean loop capital put a 1200 dollars target does that have room to the upside in your opinion you know it's hard to chase stocks. Because it certainly has run up, to your point. Yeah, the valuations are, are real, you know, and, 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 you know, I think right now everyone is excited when that excitement phase. Right. Uh, but you have to look at valuations. You have to understand, hey, I, I know, and I know earnings are growing quite a bit, cash flow is growing, all that. But however, you got to look at valuations long term and see if that makes sense for you. Yeah, and you said that they're pegging the market opportunity as all these upgrades of the GPU infrastructure is happening, yeah. right? And that's another part that just sort of fans their flame, right? And it helps them along. In the meantime, you do have a few names that you're focusing on as potential winners. A name like Oracle, why? Mm -hmm. So when you think of the Gen AI, obviously the infrastructure is all about NVIDIA, it's all about H100 and chips. But if you're looking, if you're, if you're any other company out there and looking to have access to some of these chips, but maybe don't have the relationship with NVIDIA, you will go to a company like Oracle, who's going to provide you the access to these to that infrastructure and being able to run these AI, AI application within your own system. So I think what we're going to see is we're going to see the move to the application phase where companies will use uh, Oracle or, or other companies to be able to have access to these AI capabilities. Yeah, you had Adobe in there. We're showing these cloud stocks. You have Adobe. Yeah. Adobe in there too, right? Yeah, Adobe is also another company that has been doing a lot of great work in technology. And now, they, that, besides their uh, relationship with NVIDIA, has really the, the tools and the ability to really help companies master these AI tools and, and, and become very proficient and in, 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 in increasing productivity and, and really being much better at, 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 at managing their uh, AI infrastructure. And where does ServiceNow fit into this story? So ServiceNow is a, is a company that helps the enterprise better, uh, be more efficient, and, and help with productivity. So what happens with, with the companies like ServiceNow is, and, 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 and NVIDIA talked about their, their partnership there, is really if you are, if you are 
needing to set up some kind of AI structures within your, within your enterprise, you have to go to a service now, and service now will help mm -hmm. provide those, those tools and, and, and really help optimize your operations. Yeah, I see uh, we had uh, Palo Alto Networks on there, there's uh, CrowdStrike, I mean, there's so many names. Um, we're going to be talking about um, CRM, so Salesforce, so we'll have a lot of names that we're focusing yeah. on. Before I move away from this group overall, I mean, the upside potential, some of them could be frothy, but what kind of upside are we seeing for this group? I mean, again, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a new cycle that started, right. right? If you think about technological strike, and these but three are to five years, something's got to happen probably. Right, even, even longer than that. I think right. these once in a generation type of cycles that happen, and it could take five to 10 years. We're basically at the tip of the iceberg here because, again, we're only seeing the infrastructure spend right now. We don't know what's going to be the uh, next Netflix or the next Uber. And if you remember, after cloud, we've seen all these companies come up yeah. and, and really create a massive amount of shareholders their value. So I think that's what's going to happen with the AI revolution. I mean, if people invest, if don't invest in tech, maybe they'll be missing out on some moves or innovation, yeah. I guess, in the next decade. I don't think you can't not spend on tech. It's 40% right. of the S&P, right? Yeah. So I think yeah. you, ha you have to be in it and you have to think about these tools as a way f that's going to help every business. Really, I don't care what you do. You have to have some kind of AI component in your operations. Yeah, we've had a lot of conversations about EVs and I just wanted to circle back. I don't know if you're just sort of taking a step back I'm from Tesla, um, like everybody seems to be doing over one year, Tesla's down. 1%. Um, thoughts on EVs and Tesla, which has been a real, six months down uh, 13%. Oh, look, we know that Tesla went from 200, from, I'm sorry, 300 to 200. Yeah. There was hopes for it to go higher. I mean, you know, um, any yeah. thoughts there? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a rough uh, time for Tesla. I think we haven't made money in that stock in the last three years, basically. But I think what's going on is a lot of the issues are self-inflicted. Self I think Tesla has, has reduced the price of their cars many times over, which created doubt about their margins or their growth rates, really hurt the other EV companies. So the whole sector is struggling as a result. Uh, and Elon is, is, is frankly doing a lot of things that are, that are not very pleasing to the, uh, to the consumer. I think there is a lot of negativity that he's been building up yeah. that, is, that is hurting the name. Right, right. Yeah, and look, I mean, you know, a lot of folks saying he's distracted, but yeah. Tesla has been the leader. BYD has been an incredible competitor, right. but a lot of names. Lee Auto, for example, doing great. Yeah. Rivian and Lucid did not do so well. Um, I always enjoy our conversations, especially in person when you're here on the East Coast. Hatem Diab, thank you so much for being with us of Gerber Kawasaki. Thank you.